Hey, everybody. Hi. Hey. I know we just left each other, but I wanted to get us together because we attempted to do a <laughs> review previously, but um, we were tired and we were missing some folks. And I just wanted to make sure I included everybody who went. So um, thank you, everybody, for who's watching. And um, this group, me and my um, girlfriends went to the Tennessee distilleries to Jack Daniels and Uncle Nearest specific distilleries. Um, we had a good time and we just wanted to share with you all um, our honest feelings um, about a few items um, pertaining to the actual trip. So our, um, let me let everyone introduce themselves um, on the line. So everyone knows me, Inventors of Spirits, I'm Tanya. Um, Jessica? Hi, I'm Jessica. And Jemiah Divine Designs. Hi, I'm Ronette. Nate Nutritional Nuggets. Are you on mute, Nate's Nutritional Nuggets? He is on mute. Are you on mute? Oh, now you you mute, then you unmute it, and then you mm -hmm. mute it again. Just click it one time. <clears throat> and she froze. Okay, we're gonna come back to Shanae. So that's Shanae with Nay's Nutritional Nuggets. And then uh, we have Janaya Sweet Boutique. Hi, I am Angela. All right. All right. And um, we have um, EMT Enterprises. Erica Morgan Taylor. All right. Yeah. And we're gonna bring it back to Nay's Nutritional Nuggets. Is she froze? Can you hear us, Shanae? Shanae is froze. Okay, Shanae is frozen. Okay. Oh, I had already said I. Sorry. Oh, we, we, you have froze. Shanae's nutritional nuggets. Yeah, you froze. It's okay. So oh. um, we're going to go in. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jack Daniels Distillery first. Um, Jack Daniels Distillery um, is located in Lynchburg, Tennessee, and um, each of us is going to pretty much, um, well, we're just going to talk about the different um, happenings at the distillery. Uh, we're not going to really repeat anything, but just add content on um, as each of us contribute to the conversation, but we're going to focus on the location, lodging, transportation, the property of the distillery, the tour pricing the guide, the knowledge of the tour guide, um, the history, the tasting, the gift shop, and just any other um, comments associated with the experience with the Jack Daniels Distillery. So let's start with location. How did you all feel about the location of the actual distillery? Mm. With the um, location of the hotel, and for the location of the site was good because it's only 20 minutes apart. Okay. So the distance was good from each other from where mm -hmm. it was. Anybody else have any input on, on that in terms of the distillery as well as lodging? Um, I, I just think, I mean, maybe if you have tourists coming in, maybe there should be some inn or some venue or, or some place for them to stay a little closer to the uh, distilleries, but I mean, as Angela said, it wasn't as far. It was only twenty minutes, so um, close enough. Okay. Um, my thoughts in reference to location was um, because even though it was twenty minutes apart, I don't feel that lodging was sufficient. Um, only because in reference to transportation. You you was either gonna drive, have to have a designated driver, and um, it just didn't, you know, it wasn't conducive to going to a distillery to have a tasting, you know, or even if if you wanted to enjoy a cocktail or so, you would always have to travel with a designated driver or have someone that's gonna sort of lean back from um, actually drinking from that evening since they didn't have Uber. Um, 
Anybody else had an opinion about the location and lodging and the distance between? No, I was pretty much in agreement with that. It wasn't too far, I guess, of a drive. I mean, of course, ideally something closer would be, you know, I mean, that's just ideally, but it wasn't bad. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about um, let's talk about the distillery property. Hmm. How did y'all feel about the presentation of the property, the layout, um, and so how you go in in and out of the areas um, for the tasting and the tour? Mm. Are, are we talking specific to Jack Daniels or? Yeah, we're talking Jack Daniels okay. only. Um, the property to me was nice. Uh, it was clear and concise as far as the tour was concerned. I liked the layout. I liked that they took us up on a shuttle uh, to the top of the hill. Um, it gives others opportunity to be able to um, to go up and see um, where they kind of process things. So, I, I mean, the property was nice, it was clean, um, well organized, that kind of thing. Okay. Anyone else? Mm, I agree. I it actually was like in the same area, so that was nice. It wasn't yeah. too bad of a walk to get to the different sections. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like they had us walking a whole mile or anything like that on the mm -hmm. um I actually like the um the fact that you know parking was right there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you didn't have to walk you didn't have to walk too far um to parking. Um I I like the the actual entrance to the actual distillery and how they had the lobby sort of set up like a like almost like a mini museum with some mm -hmm. of the history and um legacies up on the wall i actually like that um what did you think about the property shanae it goes the way well well structured and laid out um <clears throat> Nice location, distillery wise, meaning scenery and such, and a little cool town, you know, nearby. I think it was suitable for like. Freezing. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to. Um, Shanae in a minute. Um, yeah, I think the structure with the, like she said, the museum, uh, well, mm -hmm. the artifacts of the information in the beginning was sufficient. Um, like the, as far as like the family tree, mm -hmm. that was good information as far as, you know, what to expect, even though we'll get right. into that later <laughs> um, down the line about that. But um, that was very informative. Okay. Rana, anything from your end? I'm pretty much in agreement with everybody. It was pretty much nice, clean. Um, the the layout of everything wasn't too far of a walk. That was a good thing as far as um, to see where, you know, the workers work and how they do the process and then trying to get there. You know, it wasn't too far, like in between. And then the way they had the tour to where each place you went to in the end, it guided you right back to, you know, the beginning mm -hmm. to the the area it wasn't, you know, like as if like it was, you know, mixed up where you go to one place, go to another, then you got to go back around like you're overlapping. So it was organized pretty good. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. For those of you who use the restroom, what did the restroom look like? I didn't go into the restroom. Was the restroom clean? I didn't use the restroom. No. I didn't use the restroom. Front end I know Sinead went and um I think Sinead and Erica went. I don't think I went. I didn't go that one. Oh, Erica, did you go into Jack Daniels restroom? I did. Um very clean. Um very nice. Um just well appointed. Okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about pricing. So hmm. What did you all think about the pricing? Did y'all think it was reasonable? Um, you know, with you know, pricing meaning inclusive of what we got. You know, so that the 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 history, the knowledge, as well as the tasting itself. Okay. What are you all thoughts about the pricing? Um, as far as the information and the tour guide was very good in pricing as far as the tasting mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> like who who do kind of thing um yeah i think it could have been more with the tasting as we all was looking like wait what is this but as far as the information and as to the different parts of the distillery i enjoyed that um, like so far as far as the tasting part, as far as the amounts, right. it could have been more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the I mean, when we sat down, I was looking at it thinking, oh, when they when they're gonna pour, you right? Know, cause I didn't right. see anything in the cup, and then I looked at the bottom and I saw a little brown, and I'm thinking, oh, that's yeah. It? I mean, but it was it was just, like it was just, just enough to, to yeah it was just enough to put your tongue the tip of your tongue basically right right oh okay you can't swish swish <laughs> no there was definitely yeah. no room to swish if you swish, <laughs> that, that would have been your taste the swish <laughs> one swish that was I, so I I, go ahead erica Oh, I was just going to say in, in my, my experience, the educational experience, that portion of it, the whole tour in its entirety, I, I'm in agreement with you all as far as the tasting itself. Um, tour guide, Angelo, shout out to him. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but that whole experience, but the tasting, you all are correct. It gave you just a little bit of something to wet your palate, but yeah. I don't think it was about it, it. But it just wet it, just <laughs> to tease it, teased it, basically. Yeah. Oh, yep, good word, teased. Mm -hmm. But that probably was intentional. But as you say, Angela was a great tour guide. He was very good. Yeah. And uh, he, he was, you know, it was little eye candy, very pleasing <laughs> to the eye to, you know, guide us through or you know. So, I mean, I mean, what was it? Was it 30 or 35 dollars, Angela? Yeah, I it remember. was that one was 30, and Uncle Nearest was 35. Okay, so yeah, I'm losing more 30 dollars for a knowledgeable information. But, for a knowledgeable, handsome guy to walk <laughs> through a short property, <laughs> minus the amount of, you know, just a little, you know, just to wet your tongue. Like Shanae said, just put your tongue in there to wet it and the, and the juice was gone. <laughs> so, over. Over. <laughs> it was like, what is this? What happened? If you missed oh, it, you a mess. Yeah. yeah. I was disappointed in the tasting piece. Mm -hmm. um, Jackie and the state. I was excited in that high hopes. So, the tour was on point. The tour was impeccable. 
I think. He knew the history. He understood it. And it seemed like, you know, when you get family driven or something people really believe in and love what they're doing. They brought what they do. And he gave us that. Along with that body. He gave it to us. But when we got in the taste room, I instantly my energy dropped because it's like the windy summer, you know, commercial like, here's the beach. So I'm okay with okay for the knowledge that we gained. Mm -hmm. Tasting wise, I had to buy the whole day this work. So I could actually have a taste of a few angles. Yeah. That's the thing. Hmm. All right. Um, so let's see. We already talked about that. Um, what about the history of the distillery? Did anything spark y'all, you know, something to make you want to research it a little more? I, you know, I was a little bothered at the fact that they, you know, I guess in those days, the likelihood of Taking a picture of, you know, um, nearest green, you know, being that he was property at that time, you know, yeah. probably what it was. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, um, I did admire the, the the lineage, how both families just sort of stuck together to sort of kept the, to keep things going. Mm -hmm. um, I personally feel like a lot of it that's given is really for reparations, uh, you know, and things of that sort. Um, you know, sort of like saying, you know, oops, I'm sorry. You know, we owe you a lot, so this is what we're gonna do. So what are you all's thoughts about the, the history um, during the tour? I mean, for me, it's just like all other uh, history where Blacks have, our African Americans, however you see it, have contributed to critical industry. Um, however, I, I do believe the acknowledgement by this company, by Jack Daniels and Brown, I think in Brown and Foreman, is encouraging, um, regardless of how it got there. Um, them acknowledging in that tour, at least, that uh, Nearest Green was the first master distiller in 18, what was it, 1865 or sometime in the 1800s, 64, yeah. where they could not be acknowledged. So, I mean, it, although all those things may be true, um, acknowledging that, acknowledging it consistently is very encouraging because... Uh, to do what he did at that time, uneducated, um, enslaved at some point, is uh, goes against all the messaging that's going on now that people had to teach Blacks to do things. But, mm -hmm. I mean, in this instance, he understood the process. He understood the value of, of what was going on. So... I mean, I'm encouraged by it. It makes me a little more curious about him and that family. Um, and for me, it was somewhat a black history list. So that's my two cents. Thoughts yeah. from anybody else? I had to call my mom about that one. But the enlightenment <laughs> of, yeah. <laughs> but it took me back to certain stuff that has occurred in my family. So it enlightened me on a lot of stuff. And to when we get to Uncle Nearest, that really put like the topper of everything. As far as I did ask the question about as to the picture. And like she was saying back then, they weren't allowed to take pictures of slaves because it's property. So, right. yeah. So it made you think a lot of yeah. stuff. Definitely. And even, like I said, especially with my family history, is like, okay, that makes sense with a lot of things. You know, a lot of things they want to just be on a hush and push under the rug, but then you got to make face of it. So. Right. 
Anybody else have any input about the history? Anything that stood out to you or um, made you, you know, um, you know, think of more questions that might prompt you to look certain things up? All right. All right, let's um, move on to the next. I still was stuck on the picture piece for me. Mm -hmm. I know what they mm -hmm. said, but I feel like y'all managed to get pictures. Everybody else. Everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're, we're citing slavery as a thing, but we got pictures of most of almost all key players underground railroad they got pictures of harriet tubman y'all couldn't right. get a picture of near do you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying i just i feel like it's more to it mm -hmm. but i also feel it's one of those things that will never really get the answer let let me be clear i'm not citing slavery there's no telling why there's no mm -hmm. picture of of uh, uh, near screen, it, I just know historically, you know, I just go back to my great grandmother. There's no picture of her, so it could have been. And the lady mentioned this on one of the tours how they thought maybe it was you, <laughs> but how they thought people would a flash of a camera would steal their soul. You never know what the paradigm was at the time to not have him. Uh, be photographed in any way. So I, I, we we will just never know that. Well, you know, my, my whole thing is first thing that came to my mind was, okay, well, maybe they couldn't. But just like Shanae said, there's pictures of other slaves. I mean, they got them hanging from trees. They have them, mm -hmm. you know, there in South Carolina at the port being sold, taking pictures of property. Um, I think that maybe not having that picture there sort of um, is like, this is where it all started. And I just don't think that's real where people wanted to focus. I think they wanted to focus just on, this is just Jack Daniels is some good whiskey and, and, you know, yeah, we have a good relationship with their family. We're going to tell you the story, but mm -hmm. we're just not going to put it where it's sort of stapled anywhere. So those are my thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So I know we touched on this about the tasting experience, mm. um, about it left a lot to be desired. Um, I like the fact of, I like their little tasting plaques. I'll probably get TJ to make me some. Yeah. Um, some of those, I think that those were very nice. I still think that, yeah, I don't think anybody has to worry about not getting their fair share of what a full tasting is, but that was just ridiculous. So, that yeah, was ridiculous. That was yeah. like they took a dropper. I don't even think it wasn't a poured. dropper, it's, it's almost impossible to yes. pour a bottle and pour that little unless your bottle's empty. I feel like they right. had a little dropper. And they said the eight of drops it. for you, eight drops for you, and eight <laughs> drops for you, and send us on our way. It was true. That's that's that what I think. Because you saw and go by the bottle, and go by the bottle. Because <laughs> you saw you know, how because right. I know I know we didn't get to Uncle Nearest yet, but when she just free poured it, you saw she couldn't control how much she poured. Right. And that's why they said she and, didn't. They were she wasn't allowed to pour and, anymore. And she had a spout. She had a spout yes. on it. Still struggle, man. Please, but do you and think I it had to do with that? Their tastings are supposed to be a half ounce. Mm -hmm. But do you think it had to do with it being that it was? They said that it was a dry county, and they really well. That's what I was wondering. But it's like to, in that case, if you're not gonna do it, don't do it. Yeah, so I, I I mean, I'm Jasmine, Jessica, Lord Jesus, forgive me. But Jessica, yes, you feel like <laughs> you, you, is it, you feel like uh, there may have been some stipulations and they had to pour as little as possible as that. Yeah, you know. based on he said it was an educational experience, which is why they could do it. But maybe they couldn't mm -hmm. give us the actual, you know, 
good full enough. teeth. Right. Because it was and very consistent at church the room. for communion. Then we, all of us got together. Um, um, yeah. Janae, the, the cups are smaller church. for communion. <laughs> cups, that was the you get more small. communion than that. Well, <laughs> okay. I'm just saying now, no facts in in past because mm. I did two Catholic church. You got about a half ounce of wine yes. in church, and it was yeah. everybody. It wasn't until uh, recent grape juice. that they started making the change, like. When I say recent, I mean the past few decades. But for me growing up and even through teenage years, we were drinking wine at church. Mm-hmm. Moonshine. As a teenager. Mm-hmm. Out the same cup. I said wine, girl. Incidentally. Wine. <laughs> Look, no, but I just, even if it was dry, like he said, they got around it by calling it educational Mm -hmm. well i can't learn if i can't actually ascertain the good goods you were trying to teach me so i i it's a matter so for them that's probably something that is public record we could probably look it up i seriously Mm -hmm. doubt they say give give three dollops this send them on their way. <laughs> they will say you can or you can't. That may have been like you can't serve whole drinks, but that was just ridiculous. I'm sorry. It it, it, it could potentially be a marketing tactic in, in the opposite yeah. way. We're just gonna let you wet, wet your whistle just a little bit, and you're gonna have to to get the extended version of it you're gonna to have to go to the store to the white rabbit shop and purchase the rest but even with that being said you can't even like taste the full effect of say to say okay i want to go buy this right. well, then also yeah, they buy the drink. So in the beginning the frozen drink remember you all bought the frozen drink yeah drink. yeah but it did that you do that so i don't know it's kind of really weird. jessica you're going to compare that little that Coca-Cola slushy. <laughs> no, she I'm didn't even have none. I'm saying, no. well, I guess that theory's no. out the window about it being a dry cabin because they did let oh, you yeah. actually buy a drink. We didn't have that experience. She's saying so we I know bought a drink. Uncle Nearest, but they didn't allow you to buy a drink at Uncle Nearest. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. So maybe they were trying to make up for it because they know they was only going to give you that smidge of <laughs> drink. I, and and like that's probably smidge. what was in there. That little smidge yeah. was in there. As a matter of fact, that's, me. that's where the other ounce was at. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in the slushy? <laughs> that's that's where the slushy. rest of your drink was. If you didn't spend another $7, you won't go right. taste it. And you know what? Okay, so now to think that's about it. So now to think about it, so they ask you if you want to buy a slushie for seven dollars, correct? They ain't ask you how many you wanted per person. So you was only allowed to I think basically to get just just one. one. (laughs) That's it. You only get one. Uh uh, I don't think my thing is it was some I can't go back to get another one because she was gone. That's the last tour. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah, because you gotta gone. buy it. She was in the you truck. gotta buy it at check in. Yeah, she was in the truck following us. Yeah, she was gone. But you probably can't buy it. I mean, since oh, it is a dry county, you cannot buy it in the same place they serve it. That's probably the case. Why you have to pre-purchase? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, because that happens in a lot of little. But what if I wanted another things. one? And that means that I can't sense. get another one. You have to go. You should have purchased at the beginning because because they are a dry county. You probably they they don't necessarily have a license. I forget how that rule is explained, but you're supposed to buy the alcohol because that hardly qualifies as alcohol, in my opinion. But you have to buy the alcohol away from the space that is served. I don't know if that's Tennessee law, but it it seems consistent in spaces where where you're not you're not really selling alcohol. 
Um, it's wow. a part of the process. You are, but you aren't, right? Mm, interesting. Mm. So let's talk about the gift shop, and I'm going to let Ronette lead with that one. Well, the gift shop, Why you got that the gift shop was nice. Um, they had quite a few items to to get purchased in there. Um, I like the variety of the items that they had there in the gift shop. Of course, especially since I was able to get me some coffee, I can't wait to taste it. But um, I got the Jack. Coffee. Oh, I, didn't the the candle? Candle. I didn't get the candle. Uh-uh. Hmm. Okay. That yeah. candle was sweet. I mean, it smelled good. It was coffee because I've had a coffee candle before. Um, but um I, I honestly I like the smell of it, but I wasn't paying thirty dollars for a candle. Right. Um <laughs> it's not that serious. Um you need your they catch that on annual sale. Oh, I get coupon <laughs> bath and body work, so and I just had a bath and body works coffee one and it cost me ten dollars. <laughs> My coupon, there you go. <laughs> get there it on sale, it's probably less than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, but um, no, nah, they had a lot of different things, and I like just for you know the men, the women, they even had you know the kids, and then the colors, and um. You no, know, just even stuff that I've seen that I like and, you know, miscellaneous stuff that they had in there. Um, I wanted to get almost every shirt because I had shoes to go with every one, but I couldn't. <laughs> but um, I liked it. I liked the setup. It, it seemed like the flow flowed good. It didn't seem like, you know, because even when other people came in there that we was, you know, kind of like bumping into each other. Because, you know, sometimes you go into a store and I guess when people get the walking through and looking it seems like it's it's like it's not flowing right and everyone's just running into each other so i noticed that when a few people came in but you know other than that i mean it was good it was nice it was clean even though you know they have stuff a lot of wood in there it wasn't like caked with dust which was good like they had a lot of glasses shot glasses and cups and mugs and it wasn't dusty so I'm just assuming they yeah. clean and wipe on a regular because, you know, you go places and you figure there's a store sitting there that, especially in a, the town that it was in when we was at, and it could be very dusty and dirty. And it's like, okay, I know it's a shop, but, can, you know, can y'all wipe this down? Like, I know I'm going to wash my glass when I get home, but still, right. you know, but it was very, all the glass was right. like shiny. But you want to see a clear one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was clean. It was nice. It wasn't dusty. Um the people that checked us out was good. They was nice, have a good day, all that good stuff. And they wrapped my stuff up pretty good. So nothing broke <laughs> and we was traveling. So that's a good thing. <laughs> so the gift shop was pretty good. Now, my, my only thing about it was I would have expected the gift shop to be on the same property as, mm -hmm. you know, where they sold the liquor and stuff. Um, so I was a little shocked about that, but then again, they did have, you know, different Jack Daniels, you know, pieces of property across their whole land. Um, and they did have the, the shuttle bus to take you, you know, to those areas, um, which is actually mm -hmm. helpful. Um, just that everything closes at six o'clock, even on a Saturday, that's kind of early, but maybe it's a rule for that too. There's no talent. But um, I just wished it was just both in the same it's location. Dry County, so probably so. Usually in dry counties, stuff is always like not just around liquor, but it seems like everything closed early. I went Unless to college it's a restaurant. in dry county. Well, then no, that was close. Well, and even the restaurant yeah, didn't that stay was open very late. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised All the if... Garden closed at like you were saying about the the it this this gift shop being close or either on the property honestly probably without anyone saying anything i wouldn't be surprised if that whole strip leading down to the gift shop they probably own 
or have mm-hmm. some piece in it. So, you know what I'm saying? So in theory, it might be part yeah. of their land and, you know, they just don't talk about it. Does that make sense? So it's sort of like it's on their property, <laughs> you know, but not technically at the, by the, at the distillery. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I just think is if the distillery closes at six p.m., then everything else in the town. <laughs> I, I mean, it makes sense for it to close around that time because now, really, it seems like the distillery is the draw for that space, and and because they close at six o'clock, there's no real point in keeping it open late. Maybe they should keep them open a little later, but there's no real point. Right. Okay. So overall, would y'all recommend Jack Daniels Distillery to others? I would. If you go as far as educational, why? Yes. yes, I would. I just would tell them that um, it's to when they go one um, prepare to drive twenty minutes, you know, which is not a huge deal, and then. Make sure they request Angelo. Um, <laughs> we love <and> Angelo. <laughs> make, make sure they um, try to go a little early if they want a little bit more time in the gift shop, mm-hmm. you know, before six, mm-hmm. get their tour a little earlier. And um, probably get a little tipsy before they go to the tasting part. And then, you know, if, they just look, <laughs> if they're just looking to get tipsy. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I give it a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts, Jessica? Press the wrong button. Um, I would only recommend that someone to go there if they had something to do in the area. So, like, if they was already going to be there and they may have had some time to kill, then go ahead and do it. But I wouldn't make a trip of it. Necessarily. Right. Right. But, yeah. I agree. I agree with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay. It wasn't enough going on on top or around. It seemed like like when we got ready to leave from the hardware store, it seemed like we had shut down the, the night. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> it's like going to the club and you turn it on. It's that time you got to go home, but you got to get the Right. It was like you could see the tumbleweed rolling in the parking lot. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, it was it was pretty much deserted. So um, so if you so if you had to give it just the overall rating, what would your rating be, Jessica? Mm. Mm. One one through one through ten. Mm. Maybe a seven. <laughs> seven. Yeah. Run it. I thought about yeah, that. I'm pretty much with Jessica. About about a seven. Mm-hmm. Because and we was in the bed by ten. Like, come on. That's, that's true. That first night we were in the bed by ten. But guess what? I went to sleep though. You had no oh, choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a seven. A seven. Educational wise, but not the tasting. Okay. I think a bit, a bit more. Erica? I'm going to give it a 7.5, but I'm going to add this in. I'm going to give Angelo a 10. He oh, is okay. just getting the scale. We're going to give Angelo okay. a 10. And okay. we're going to do 7.5 solidly on the education, but correct. The tasting might be a nine for some other people, but and, and not to mention Angel is a relative, so he's he said so. He yep, he is a generation. Right. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. generation. So Shanae, what you sipping? Oh, I'm sticking with my original. I said seven. Okay. I was not. If we're saying overall seven. Because the tasting brought it way down. The education, I give nine, nine point five. The learning, um, I think Angelo 
and then only because the time of day and the day we went, there were a couple of things we didn't get to see only because of normal business. We didn't know any better, but we would have got to see the charcoal be made and things like that. That would be a different time. That's the only reason why I brought it down. Mm-hmm. Because I like to make they shouldn't place on the website to help you. Oh, God was told okay. like if you're interested in this, do this one. That's an overall. But education. Okay. All right. So you all heard it straight from everyone's mouth about Jack Daniels Distillery. Um, Stay tuned for Uncle Nearest Review.